Hello friends, in the present video, we will see how to find the bearing capacity of a pile by using static method. First, we will discuss about the static method in general. After that, we will see about the particular type of the soil. That means if it is a sand, what is the bearing capacity? If it is a clay, how to find the bearing capacity? Okay, now let us consider a pile. It is driven through the, I have transferred it. Okay, let us assume uh, this is the pile and up to the ground surface. And we are applying some external load on the pile Q. Okay, in general, what is the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil? Ultimate bearing capacity of the pile presenting by P. That will be summation of the bearing capacity because of the N bearing QB plus because of the friction QS. Isn't it? Now, if it is a friction pile, if it is a friction pile, then we will consider end bearing capacity will be equal to zero. If it is an end bearing pile, if it is an end bearing pile, as we have already discussed here, frictional capacity will be equal to zero. If it is a friction come end bearing, if it is a friction pile, what is the ultimate capacity of the pile? That will be equal to QS. If it is end bearing capacity, what is the ultimate bearing capacity of the pile? QB. If it is friction come and bearing, what is the ultimate carrying capacity of the pile that will be equal to summation of QS plus QB. Okay. Now, so depending upon the type of pile, we have to consider the capacity of the pile. Now, so what is mean by end bearing? Isn't it? Suppose I have to find capacity of the end bearing that will be equal to end bearing resistance QB into area of the end bearing. So here QB is nothing but an end bearing resistance. This end bearing resistance will be given in the question, end bearing resistance. So if you know the end bearing resistance and if you multiply by the area at the end bearing or base area of the base of end bearing area, then we can get the end bearing capacity. So in general, we will have the square pile and also we will have the circular pile and also we may also have the rectangle pile. Suppose if you are talking about the square pile, what about the bottom area will look like? It will look like a circle. What about the area of the circle? If the diameter of the D, then end bearing area that can be written as pi by 4 into d square. Similarly, if it is a square type, so what can we conclude here? Let us say each side of the pile is B. What about the end bearing area that we can be written as here? D square. If it is a rectangle, then what can we write here? End bearing area that will be nothing but a D into D. Isn't it? Now here I will say AB is nothing but a end bearing area. End bearing area is depending upon the column dimensions, isn't it? Now end bearing resistance is depending upon the type of the soil. So depending on the pile, you will find out the end bearing area. Depending upon the soil, you will find out the end bearing resistance. So this is what about the evaluation of the end bearing capacity. What about the friction pile capacity? QS is nothing but a frictional capacity of a pile. Similarly, in a similar term, can you express it? This can be represented as a QS into AS. What about the QS can be written as? QS is nothing but a skin resistance between pile and soil. Skin resistance between pile and soil. 
Okay, again, this is depending upon the both pile and also as well as the soil. In the previous TZQB, it is only depending upon the type of the soil. If it is a skin friction, it will be depending upon both soil and the pile. If it is a wood type, then it will have one skin friction resistance. If it is a concrete, if it is skill, like the different type of material, you will have the different types of resistance. And what about AS area? AS is nothing but a surface area of a pile. Surface area of pile. First, let us consider a circular uh, pile. Let us consider a circular pile. Sorry, again. Uh, so if you consider a circular pile, so what is the surface area? First of all, find out the, what is the circumference. The circumference is nothing but a pi d into, yeah, that is pi d, right? So what about the length of the pile? That will be equal to, let us say, L. Then what about the circumference area? That will be equal to circumference length pi d into what about the total area, L, if it is a circular one. What about if it is a square? If it is a square, what about the total surface length? Four sides, four sides equal length. That means four into B, total length L. So if it is a square pile, if it is a rectangle pile, breadth and depth are different. That means we are having two depth and so two into B plus D into L if it is a rectangle. Suppose if I draw the dimensions of the rectangle, it is B, let us say if it is breadth, if it is depth. So what about the circumference length? B plus D plus B plus D. That means 2 plus 2B plus 2D. If I take common to 2 into B plus D, over a length of L. So what about the area? L into 2 into B plus D. This is for a rectangle. If you're talking about the square, all the dimensions are same. So how many sides we have? Four sides. That's why 4 into B into L. So depending upon the type of the file, we have to find out the corresponding surface area and then multiply by the skin friction resistance then you will get the um, bearing capacity. Suppose if it is a friction pile, if it is a friction pile, what about the bearing capacity of the pile? That will be equal to Q into S. That will be equal to QS into AS. Similarly, if it is an end bearing pile, if it is an end bearing pile, what about the ultimate capacity of the pile? That will be equal to QB. That will be equal to QB into AB. If it is a friction come and bearing pile, if it is a friction come and bearing pile. So what about the ultimate capacity of the pile? Q, UP, that can be written as QB plus QS. That will be equal to QB into AB plus QS into AS. So depending upon the dimensions of the pile, just now we have seen how to find out the end bearing area of the pile and how to find out the surface area of the pile. So if you want to find out the capacity, so how many terms you have to find out? We have to know what is the end bearing resistance and also you have to know the what is the skin friction resistance between the pile and the soil. Okay, if you know these two then, you can find out the ultimate bearing capacity of a pile. Okay. In the next video, we will see how to find the ultimate capacity of a pile in a clay soil. Thank you.